So traditionally, basses have a 34 inch scale length. But sometimes you find you just need more clarity through thinner strings, higher tension, and longer scale length. Commercially, there are some ambitious 35 and a half inch basses out there, and some even more ambitious that go all the way up to 37. But if you want the maximum 40 inch scale of your typical upright bass in electric bass guitar form, the only place I know where to go is Calium. With one of the first videos of this channel of being a contrabass guitar experiment on a regular 34 inch bass, and after playing around with the commercially longest 37 inch Bryce bass I could find last summer, I decided it's time to upgrade yet again to this Calium Quake bass in our now classic C Sharp Zero standard tuning. So is this premium instrument worth any of its improvements, if any? This is Kevin from Said Too Much. I've got a full unboxing video if you want to go ahead and check that out. But moving it over to a stand with better lighting, you can see we've got a super thin clear green gloss finish on a swamp ash body with a standard bolt-on maple neck connected with a tapered heel. I guess the fretboard wood is ebony? And there's no real wood grain texture in there. There's only a single 20th anniversary fret marker at that 12th fret with the fan fret design starting at a 37 inch scale and moving all the way up to that 40 inch scale. There's also some half circle side dots at the standard marking positions going all the way up for a total of 25 frets, with the fretwork being smooth and no horribly buzzing spots. The headstock has a standard black finish and a very unconventional geometric design I'm still not sure I like. I kind of think this big guy would benefit from a headless design, but I guess I'm not too picky for now. It's a top loading bridge, something you need for these very specifically tapered Calium brand strings, and the string spacing is a little wider than a standard condensed 5 string. Their thinking was probably to compensate how much room these thick quake bass strings take up, but similar gauge strings did fit quite nicely on my modded Bryce bass. I like tighter spacings because I'm primarily a guitarist. I guess I just gotta learn to use my fingers more, right? The spacing is more similar to a traditional 4 string. While I'm talking strings, here are the gauges, by the way. Only thinner by about a tenth of an inch at that low C sharp compared to my previous Bryce bass. On Calium's recommendation, I went with a slightly higher tension on the low end than what I've been previously using. The bridge saddles themselves are ones I haven't seen before, but I do like them. You just loosen this hex screw and move it wherever you'd like. On the past two basses, intonation had always become an issue, and I would always end up pushing the last two saddles to their limit and still be a little sharp on those upper frets. Plenty of space here. For once, it seems like someone actually built a bass to go this low. Huh. On the back, we have a battery box for the preamp and an electronics cover that is actually warped over the curve of the design. Like, it's naturally flat and bent by the screws to fit the form, which I thought was a little weird. The output jack is also located on the back with, again, this geometric cutout design I'm still not sure about. Not just because of looks, but because when trying to play the bass in a classical position, something more comfortable for reaching the upper frets the tapered horn accommodates, it has the jack coming out at an angle that pokes into my leg. It just kind of bothers me and might wear out a jack quicker. So some subjectively bad and subjectively good things, but there is one very much objectively bad thing, and I'm really embarrassed for Calium to even mention it. The bass turned my shirt green. At first when I saw it, I was kind of like, when did I spill Mountain Dew on me? But then I realized it matches the same pattern as the wing. I rubbed another clean shirt in that cutout area, and sure enough, there was even more obvious green rub off. It was a hot day, and I was sweating a lot in that area, which must have made it pretty easy to rub off with little effort. Now in Calium's defense, they did tell me that this was a base they had laying around for a while, and built primarily to experiment with different wirings. It's technically not even what I ordered. It may not even be fair to compare this guy to the stock models they mostly sell now which features an alder body, three single coil pickups, and a passive design. It's hard to find many pictures, but it looks like they are still revolving around this thin porous finish. 
With what I paid being comparable to a dingwall or other boutique instrument, this was jaw-dropping, and I really hate having to make this a separate category from aesthetics and hardware, but my notes were just too substantial in this department. Again, everything was mostly fine, smooth fretwork, no major adjustments to intonation or action straight out of the box. This space was constructed for low tunings. There won't be any extreme mod category in this review but the finish in particular could have inarguably used more attention. Now on a slightly more positive note, this guy has a lot of bells and whistles. Tone is what's most important anyway, right? Especially in my DIY state of mind. So try to follow along as I cover it all. We have two pairs of single coil pickups and a fanned layout, each of which could have their heights adjusted independently, which could yield an interesting experiment on its own down the road. Over to the knobs, the biggest three are the passive controls, which include a volume for the neck pair of pickups, a volume for the bridge pair of pickups, and a stacked knob with traditional universal tone control on the bottom, extra high shimmer roll off at the top. The middle knobs control a dark glass tone capsule preamp for a high mid booster cut. Low mid booster cut. and bass booster cut. The switches toggle the next single coil wiring between series and parallel, then the bridge single coils between series and parallel, Then this is where disappointment strikes again. The third switch was supposed to toggle wiring both pairs of single coils in series into the top knob or leaving them in parallel with individual volume controls. But all I ever get is this kind of kill switch in the first position and the correct individual volume controls in the second. The last switch was supposed to toggle the preamp on and off, but from what I can tell it's not doing anything and the preamp is always on which is probably what I would have preferred tone-wise anyways, since I've always been putting the Bryce bass in active mode, but still. Part of the blame could be that I agreed to some last minute wiring to allow me to use nine volts instead of 18 volts, and I'm reaching out to Calium to try to troubleshoot. Obviously there's a lot going on inside there, but even if any of you out there have ideas, I'm open to them, or just maybe other uses for the switches altogether. I would have really liked to hear it in a passive mode though. Also, maybe something could have gotten knocked loose in transport. Again, I'm really trying not to blame Calium fully for this. Good news is there's still a lot of configurations to try out, and I'll make a video detailing every kind of arrangement as boring and thorough as any tone nerd would want. But for now, I'm just gonna have some fun with it. Over the past few days, I've been favoring this blended tone with both pairs of single coils in series and the bass EQ turned all the way up. This kind of Swiss army knife of bass will let you decide whatever kind of configuration you would want on your fully custom model that Kalia might be able to cook up for you. These subcontra basses are still practically new instruments and we're all still experimenting. Now, I want to quick take the time to help me pay off this extreme instrument by letting you all know I have several cool DI riffs and sample packs you can hear and reamp on your own if you would like to help support this community over on my Patreon. There will be plenty of material from this new guy soon, and there's already a lot more DI from all the instruments I've worked on for this channel over there, and you'll get access to all at once. Some of them are marked under a free tag that you can check out for free. I also made a Facebook group about a month ago that if you still want to just help grow the community, you can go ahead and join and pitch new ideas or share some of your own projects. I get a lot of you contacting me about how you've taken inspiration from this channel for your own projects, or have even expanded on it. I know I love to hear them, and I know others would too, and I'm more than willing to give us a platform to grow and share. Anyway, it's on to the demo, if you guys haven't already skipped to that timestamp.
So I complained about the extra three inches on the 37 inch scale length Bryce base. Now, how about adding another three for the 40? Yeah, I can just barely stretch my fingers over the first four frets when putting as much effort into it as possible. I can't stress this enough though, you really shouldn't be playing this way because you could hurt your hand. It's better off to try hand positions further up the neck or try learning a three fret hand position and move around a little more, like upright bass techniques. Again, with this being almost completely different than a bass guitar, we can benefit from using new techniques. The higher scale length also makes the strings feel looser, despite being a slightly higher tension than what I've been previously using on the subcontra basses. I think another reason they made the string spacing so wide was to have fun really bending these strings around too. Feels great. There's one last thing I want to talk about, my ordering experience. I'm not going to get too much into it, but basically back in December, Callium had posted about a special going on for their Quake bases, and looking for any excuse I could to grab one, I inquired through email. I put a more than 50% deposit down for an estimated shipping date of March 1st. Now, two weeks before then, I started reaching out to them again to see what's going on. I sent an embarrassing amount of emails and only got a response a whole week after that March 1st date. After several excuses, more ignored emails, and broken promises, I finally received this guy on June 19th, more than double the time I was estimated. And get this, this isn't even the base I ordered. I had originally ordered one of those stock ones in black that they are currently advertising online. Granted, this one has a lot more features that they didn't upcharge me on, so I took it when they offered it to me. If I wanted the original black one, they gave me an estimated time of another two months, which I absolutely did not trust at this point. I wanted something in my hands already to start working on the material I had started conceiving all the way back in December and had to continually push back. I mean, look, I'm reasonable. I understand unforeseen things happen. People get sick and things break, but you have to tell me. You have to keep me up to date. I seriously thought I was getting scammed sometimes. You're only going to give me an excuse when I call you upset? I really don't think I'm asking for too much here. Just be a little apologetic and courteous and tell me as soon as things happen. I really hate complaining about this too. Again, I love Callium Strings. Your experience may be different. Just prepare to be patient. It does seem like they were going through some growing pains through all this with a new website, and I got better contact results through calling instead of emailing. To end on a positive note here, they did give me an extra set of strings I asked for at no additional charge. So what do you all think? Is that C-sharp usable at 40 inches yet? Are there better design choices to be made for Quake bases? Callium is practically all we have at the moment, making a marketable effort at instruments this potentially low, and I commend them for it. Something like a Dingwall could be marketed down to like an F sharp or F maybe with their 37 inch scale length, but they would probably laugh at you if you wanted to go even lower. Callium straight away suggested an octave below B standard would be a fun tuning for this guy. I'm a little surprised I couldn't find a lot of videos on these bases already, or even thorough demonstrations from Callium itself. All I could really find is stuff from Nam. One last time, I really hate saying anything negative about Callium, but for your guys' sake, I really couldn't overlook several issues. Maybe some of you could share your own experiences with boutique instrument sellers, seeing as my own experiences have been commercial up until this point. Of course, I'm going to use this guy to death no matter what, seeing as I already have ideas backed up since December. So be sure to tune back every week for new videos. For now, though, enough said. For downloads, raw instrument tracks, and more exclusives, find our community on Patreon and consider adding your support. Said too much! <laughs>